Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the My High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we're coming to you with another episode uh, sponsored by Gray Fox Games, especially because the last episode sponsored by Gray Fox Games, you never heard. Jeff, I think that we should be talking to each other as if Adrian isn't here. So that case, <laughs> when his audio goes to shit, the the uh, the uh-huh. the episode's still fine. Okay. So, yes, I agree. I mean, I could just sit out. <laughs> like that's an option. No, you still have to participate. <laughs> yeah, you still have it's to like participate. Gym, it's like gym class. <laughs> <laughs> but, just, but just know that you're you're completely optional. Is is all we're saying. <laughs> So, so I'm the weird kid in gym class that nobody picks for dodgeball, and he just goes and sits in the bleachers, but still has to be there and watch all the other kids have fun. Yeah, that that's that's what I've been reduced to. Great. I mean, you've been Loving reducing that it. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so, some would even say you've been brought up to that part. <laughs> Rude. Um. All right. Well, this is a board gaming podcast, and so ostensibly we talk sure? about board games sometimes. <laughs> uh, it's what we claim to be. Uh, 2020 has really, really stretched the definition of board game podcast to the limit for us. Um. However, we're in luck because last week's episode had audio issues and never got released. Uh, people won't know that, you know, some of the games we talk about this week are actually from last week and vice versa. Uh, well, we do now. So, uh, I I have still not played any games in either week. Um, Megan He's and I did start a new D and D campaign though that I am going to talk about to kind of fill the gaming. So it's tabletop gaming. It's still it's board gaming adjacent enough. Um, so we started a uh, a one on one D and D game. Um, this isn't I'm your DMing. first, right? You guys have done this, this before. Well, we had started before and then we scrapped and started again. Gotcha. Um, but otherwise, it is our first time doing just the one-on-one uh, style. So we've both missed D and D because COVID wrecked our D and D group. We tried doing uh, online on like Roll Twenty and stuff, and we did one session, and everybody unanimously went nope. Uh, and so our group kind of is on hiatus. But Megan still wanted to play. Um, so not too long ago, I got the latest uh, official campaign. Um, Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, which is like a frozen, depressing, uh, bleak winter uh, setting, which is just wonderfully appropriate for this and particular winter. Also, one of those Baldur's um, Gate successors. Yeah, indeed. Um, so we started it two weeks ago with uh one of her old characters that she had. Uh, that was just like really happy-go-lucky little like goblin. Uh named Bixie, and I was really like, this is going to be awkward because this camp, this like setting is going to crush Bixie's spirit. Uh, and after one session, Megan kind of realized that. And she's like, you know, I don't think I want to play Bixie in this one. <laughs> and it was like, all right. I was like, well, I did a shit job of prepping for the first session, so let's just start over completely. And she's like, sounds great. So she built a new character who's more of a gruff dwarf uh, who has some background in the area. So like she has an excuse to know about things that are going on. Um, it would have been funny if she just like just doubled down on it and it's just like I don't want to do that because it's like half ass I want someone who is just like fully <laughs> right <laughs> like I want the most optimistic sunny yeah. person possible she just got off of a bus and it's just like I'm gonna make it in this town <laughs> <laughs> yeah whereas now it's her she's this gruff dwarf who tried to leave and go you know have a great life outside and then was drawn back to this run down shitty backwater <laughs> like part I, of the world I, they try to i try to get out and they just keep pulling me back in exactly um so second session went a lot better i changed a lot of things up which was nice so like she didn't like nothing that happened in the first session applied to what happened here uh and i was able to like starting the second one i was like this like setting is going to work a lot better if i'm really really like brutal in regards like I'm not going to pull punches or anything. So I was able to mix everything up from a story perspective. Uh, So even some things that, that still happened in both happened very differently. Uh, And characters that like I used in both the original half-assed version and the better version um, were just, they were, it was more, it was more natural uh, and we both had a lot more fun with it. Nice. Uh, So Uh, that's cool. No, that's good. I, I saw um, 
I think it was in D and D memes that I like. I still see every once in a while on Reddit. That was, uh, and it's one of my favorite things I've seen on there. Is always just like it's not the most moral thing to do, but you could always just pass off a cursed item to a baby. So just I'm just saying, let <laughs> Megan know that that's gonna that that can be an option for her through all of this. Yes. <laughs> just find Odd. a baby, and you're just like, here you go. You want to hold on to this finger? There you go. <laughs> now that this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, it's actually, yeah <laughs> it's actually funny because in the first one that we ended up getting that got scrapped she did totally like rob a grave that the book says like these are very cursed items and as she was doing it i was like so are you taking the stuff and she's like um is something bad gonna happen if i do and i was like you'll have to find out she's like all right yeah i'll take it <laughs> and it was like yes you're now cursed but nice. then we threw that one out so that did not happen so we'll see if she if she ends up back in that same area ever and if she takes the items again so that she can be cursed. I mean, you should you um, could also just have them be in a different area and then there's just like there's some ash and then there's these things. I wonder what happened there. Don't worry about it. Just pick it up. <laughs> just pick it up. Just pick it up. Just, that's all you have to do. Just pick it up. Yeah. There's a, there's the hat of a small perky gnome. Or right or, there, tin singed. Uh, or, or even better. She approaches a baby that's holding something, and then the baby hands it to her, and it's the cursed <laughs> item. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's where we're at. Uh, we're doing that. I'm reworking a lot of it this second time around because, like, the first time I basically tried to play it straight out of the book, it's not built for that, not at all. Um, so I'm actually having to do a little bit of planning and uh, rewriting some of the main what, what arc, do you mean especially by that? like kind of later. So the beginning parts are very much, um, it's very open-ended and open world. So like it takes place in the 10 towns, which are shocker, 10 different towns. And each town has its own little quest uh, in like the first chapter. And the first chapter is like, hey, this is for players like levels one to four. And basically they can just go to town to town. And when they get to town, here's a quest. And then they go do the quest. And then once they've done a few quests, they level up. Um and it just, it wasn't working for the way I like to DM or the way that Megan plays. Cause I, every time she's like, I'm going to go to this town. I was like, shit, I didn't read that far ahead to that town. Let's see what's going on in this town. Oh, this is happening in this town. All right, you're going to do this thing. And like the first where she found those cursed items was after an area that she went to, uh, that I even talked about, like in the Slack channel a little bit, where, uh, as a first level character, like potentially a first level character, she wasn't, but as a potential first level character, you could go do this quest. Uh, and it was like just crazy high level enemies that would very easily turn level one characters into a small stain on the, cl- on the cave wall. <laughs> um, so I'm going to present things. Yeah. Like she wants a little bit more linear play uh than that she's not interested in like truly wide open sandbox Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna try and drop breadcrumbs in such a way that you know she can feel like she has choices but really all paths you know it's gonna be the mass effect 3 ending of open world your decisions matter type type gameplay gotcha you know, ultimately, it's going to boil down to pick what pick one of three colors. <laughs> okay. You could also shoot the kid. There's a fourth path. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the worst ending, because then you yes. all just lost and died. Yeah. Uh, There's a new Mass Effect coming. There is a new Mass Effect coming. In like eight that. years yeah. or something. Yeah. As as I'm playing Andromeda now, it's uh, really hard to get excited about a new uh, Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah, no, you've ruined the rest of Mass Effect. You know, you, it's, the best way to remember Mass Effect is not to play Andromeda. That's very true. Because uh, then that will now ruin, 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 ruin. Uh, I I gotta say, I, the, the the guy that did like Andromeda, he's gone, right? Uh, Casey something. Yeah. Uh. I, I feel know. like that I have would... no idea. Okay. I don't know. All I'm going to say is just really like push 10, 10 cursed items, 10 kids. And he just, I'm just saying, just, <laughs> just, just that's linear. Every right time she goes to yeah. babies, throw cursed items at her. Yes. Gotcha. I'm sure she'll love it. No, yeah. there's the answer <laughs> to Zach's question. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, but that's he never, he never worked on Andromeda. He left before uh, Andromeda. That's why. Oh no! Well, no, I'm thinking of the person that actually did Andromeda. Mark Mac Walters. Yeah, I have no. Better not. Okay, I because f- I feel like they got a lot of shit for Andromeda, so I feel like they're yeah, it sucked. They killed yeah. Mass Effect. They killed yeah. Mass Effect. 
So I'm just oh hoping God, that so they understand bad. that they can't do that again. But you know, that game only came out three years. I ago. mean, it's EA. <laughs> uh, let's four. be honest; they've really made it a habit to just kill everything these days. Yeah. Anyhow, so yes, that's what I've been playing lately: is Rime of the Frost Maiden uh, campaign with Megan. Um, probably gonna try and do that once a week, and then we are really gonna try. I know I say this every week. We are really gonna try. This Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, one of the days on our day off to get another game of Pandemic Legacy in because we are so fucking close to the end of Pandemic Legacy Season 1. So hopefully I'll have that to talk about sometime soon. Uh, that's what I've been playing. Jeff, how about you? What have you been playing? Star Realms, the app. Uh, uh, because I was traveling to get a new car this uh, past weekend. Fancy, fancy. Uh, so I didn't. So I had basically, I left Thursday and then I got back Sunday and I didn't play much except stuff that I could play on phones, um, which is uh, what I did. Awesome. So I was like, man, I haven't played that Star Realms campaign in a long time. Um, and then, of course, I have to play through it all over again <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, but it's it's challenging enough. Uh, I played through like the first little campaign that gets you to the first boss and then i remembered how bosses work in star realms <laughs> it's like you draw a card and then it has a power and i want to say that got brought over to the hero uh hero realms bosses at one point too um i had a really and and some of my favorite things to do in that game is because the uh, ai is fine uh but i can really call the shit out of my deck uh before i finish finish around uh, get all the te first 10 starter cards out of there and get all the cull cards, starter cull cards out. So I just really have a monster, like, that'll it'll draw the whole deck every round and annihilate them. Um, they have a ton of campaign stuff they've added. Like, every expansion comes with new missions and stuff like that. I have some of the, the ones, like, Frontiers, and those add, of course, all the new cards. Uh, the one thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have the... Uh, the fleets, the like, uh, the themed like cross faction starter decks, uh, or at least I have not found them. But uh, that would that would probably be most fun to play Star Realms with. Yeah. Um. But yeah, just uh, just a lot of lot of Star Realms. Um, nice. Yeah. Didn't you play something else last week before you went to Chicago? Uh. Yeah. I think it was Codenames. Was it Codenames Duet? That's right. It was, it was. Codenames yeah. Duet. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then Codenames Duet uh, got played with a friend of mine online. Because uh, that was your first time playing it. You really liked it, right? Yeah. It's a very good implementation of Codenames that you can play with two player. Because regular Codenames does not work in two players. It, no. ba it barely works at four. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it really needs like six. Six to eight. I mean, six it, to it, ten. It's fine with with four players if you trust the other person, but if you're like, yeah. oh, hey, new person, that's that's not gonna no, that's not gonna go well. Uh, but code names to what's fun? We played online with the uh, with that code names online thing that they put out sort of officially. Okay. Um. Yeah. It w it was interesting. I, I had to wrap my head around that. There's three assassins, and you, but. You have to choose one of your own assassins because you have, like, one of them is theirs, one of them is yours, and one of them is both. And But one of the clues could be one of the assassins that you have. So you have to remember to look at those and not just ignore them because it, you know, may or may not be your actual assassin. So you do have to choose yeah. one. Uh, but you have, I what was it? You have, like, nine and three... Or nine and six, like you have nine of your own, and then six yeah. are, are combined. <laughs> I think it was nine and three. Nine and three. Yeah. Um. So some some that you're some you're both looking for, but the majority that you're tr you're trying to get someone else to guess. Um. Because yeah, I had found like a really good like infographic of it, and I I can't find it now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, Codenames Duet was uh, a lot of fun. I would I would like to own a copy of that. But I could also just play it online. Yeah, I I want to get a copy as well. Um, just for like Megan and I to play. Um, 
when we're like traveling and stuff where we might not have access to online um because i did really like it uh i i thought it was a really clever implement implementation i played it at origins like i don't know two years ago um but i i really liked the the whole like you see three assassins on your card and one of them is like a dual assassin but the one of the other two one is a uh -huh. bystander and the other is a green card so you're gonna have to like you were saying you're gonna have to pick at some point one of your three assassins yes you have to guess it and yep. you're like oh, i hope this is the good assassin <laughs> Um, but sometimes the clues are easy enough on those to be like, oh, this is obvious. Yeah. Right. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, picked up a bunch of my shit from back in Chicago because I drove back. Um, and you actually don't have a car. It's not a car. It's an actual like SUV, so it can yes. hold things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah wh what is it? It's a 2009 Lexus RX 350. Oh, look at this motherfucker right here. Jesus Christ. Not Oh, 350? Yes. Okay. Is there That's not number? as <laughs> Yes. Uh so I was actually looking at, at Lexuses fairly recently. Lexi? Uh yeah, Lexi. <laughs> um because uh I didn't realize that apparently some of the older more rugged forerunner are like Toyota like four-wheel drive bases um Lexus is built on. Ah. And some of the Lexuses are built on. And at some point, like, so a brand new Toyota Land Cruiser, if you want, like, a big V8 off-roader vehicle, starts, fucking starts at $85,000. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, and uh, meanwhile, you can get, like, it was I think it was, like, a Lexus, uh, four, or, like, something 460. Um, I think it was. Uh, yeah, GX 460. And uh, that's based off the Land Cruiser body. Ah. Uh, but surprisingly, it only starts at $53,000. Okay. So, you know, you can go, instead of getting a Toyota, you can get a Lexus and save like $30,000. Gotcha. <laughs> Which that doesn't make right. any goddamn no, no, sense. That makes all the sense in the world, Adrian. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, but now I have my big coffin boxes. Uh, I've got the StarCraft. The World of Warcraft. I, and... I saw I saw World of Warcraft, the expansion yeah. in there, and I was like, "Yeah, it'd be a dick move if you're like, yeah, I just brought the expansion. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the expansion is uh, is only out of shrink. I've never did gotcha. anything with it. I think okay. I picked it up at a Gen Con for like some sort of dirt price, like $15 Ugh. or something like that. You lucky son. Yeah. yeah. I definitely do want to try that at some point. It is long. I'm, you it know is, what? It is an all day affair, and mm -hmm. some would say it might not be worth it at the end. Uh, <laughs> but I'm willing to try. Yes. I, you know, I made the effort for an 18xx game. I'm more than willing to make an effort for a World of Warcraft game. <laughs> yeah, World of Warcraft, <laughs> the board game. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now I, I got my StarCraft. Uh, I picked up my old Agricola stuff. Um,. I have and you all, got a bunch of minis too. All for... my 40k stuff. Nice. Uh, I separated out the 40k stuff from the fantasy stuff, uh, especially because most of my fantasy armies don't exist anymore. Well, actually, none of my fantasy armies exist anymore because it's a whole new game system. Um, At, like, as in the units don't exist. They in... created these like war scrolls to where you could still use them, but they made the humans like basically just fantasy space marines. And they never came out with, like, the fantasy Imperial Guard, like, which mm. is what my t army would be. It's just your regular human Empire dudes. And and I would have to put them all on round bases. Take all the square bases off, put them on round bases. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, but the old world fan Warhammer Fantasy might be coming back. So we'll see. Uh, oh. I do have to rebase a lot of my old stuff because uh, the base sizes changed. Then they go from like 28 to like 32 or something like that? Yeah, and then like the Terminators were on like even the 28 millimeter and the Terminators are on like 40 millimeter now. So, <laughs> uh, but they're all slot bases and I don't think they make 40 millimeter slot bases that I'm aware of. So I'd have to cut all the slots off the bottom and then they and just glue them onto the flat you know, plastic with their feet. Uh, but I want to strip all the paint off 
because uh, as I was looking at it, I was like, this kind of all sucked. Uh, and <laughs> so I'm going to repaint. Je- Jeff of... 13? 14? 13? Yeah. 14 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, or no, I was 13 oh. or 14 years old. <laughs> so 20 plus years ago. Gotcha. Uh, and, and, and you're you're trying to tell me your your painting has gotten better since then? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, shocker. I know. <laughs> um, not that much better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but just enough. Just enough. But it helps that they're all pewter. Like almost everything I have is is metal, uh, which is really easy to get the paint off. Some I, I asked Aunt the best uh, secrets of getting all the paint off is uh, simple green. So I'll just dunk them in simple green for overnight. Or, or 24 hours, and then old toothbrush, just wipe it all off. Simple green and water. I watched some dude on YouTube use this, like, organic paint thinner shit, uh, and the, the paint came off in, like, seconds. Oh, wow. Uh, but I'm sure it was some crazy caustic shit, so... <laughs> <laughs> he was fine. like, yeah, I've used this shit for years, working in minis and, you know, industrial now, settings. Yeah. 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 Real question. When he went to dip it in, did he just dip his whole hand in there? Oh, absolutely. Like, yes. No, Didn't have glo- He was like, don't wear gloves. They melt the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he have Jesus. fingerprints? <laughs> I, you know, I couldn't tell. He was British. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, those are on the other side. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, I have all my 40k stuff. It's a lot, uh, but I have I got a bunch of mini cases out of there. Most some of them were empty, and I emptied out the other ones. Like I had a bunch of Lord of the Rings stuff in there. I have a massive amount of Lord of the Rings tabletop miniature stuff, um, which they still support, and I have enough to play through an entire campaign of Fellowship of the Ring all the way through to the end of Return of the King through their entire campaign book which is what my me and my friend originally bought all of them for because we were going to go through the entire Lord of the Rings campaign and uh one but of no some no Cimmerillion stuff or however you no, want to say it. No. <laughs> uh they did do a, a Hobbit one at one point. Oh, okay. Uh Battle of the Five Armies type stuff. Uh never got into that, but I have a I have a shit ton, but it's mostly the good side. Because I was buying all the good side stuff, and he was buying all the evil stuff, and we were going to paint it up and play. Gotcha. Uh, and then the Battle Bunker in Chicago had, like, a, a to scale Helm's Deep. So <laughs> we could have played, like, Jesus. Helm's Deep, want... like, on Helm's Deep, uh, which would have been cool. But that doesn't exist anymore. I'm sure that table exists somewhere. They usually don't toss those. They ship them off to some other store. But it even had, like, a little removable wall from where the guy blew it up and stuff. Um, yeah, I got a, I got a lot of shit now in Denver that wasn't here before. A <laughs> uh, bunch of my old video game stuff. I got all my, like, original Nintendo, yeah. Super Nintendo, Genesis, 64. That's all here now. Gotcha. You can never use that excuse again. It was always just, oh, I have it back in Chicago. Nope. So, no. Nope. There's still plenty there. <laughs> um, mostly just books, uh, comics, gotcha. some board game stuff. My copy of Ticket to Ride. Yeah, you could probably just leave that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I didn't bring that one with me. Uh, not not trying to sit on Ticket to Ride. Just it's you've you've, I you've can, got the option. I can find yeah. a copy of Ticket to Ride. Yes. Yeah. Um, and like all my Arkham Horror Second Edition stuff, but I have those dice now. So now you have those dice. Yeah, fourteen hours is a long time to drive. Yes, it is. <laughs> it straight. is. Uh, <laughs> How windy was it coming back? It wasn't. Um, oh, that's always good. But I had seen just an ins- uh, like a dozen to 20 cars on- that had skidded off the road from snow that had come through in days previous. The roads were fine. Dry, no snow on the roads or anything. But like at least three tractor trailers that had totally f- fucking gone off the road. One of them had shredded the whole side of the... Tr- trailer off and dumped shit everywhere and there was a bunch of like pickups there trying to like salvage what was there that was in oh, the median. Wow. Yeah. I was like holy shit. Whatever storm came through I'm glad I was not in it. <laughs> because it was a, it was a lot. Yeah those those storms through there are fucking bonkers. Yep. Yeah must have been. I don't miss those drives. Agreed. Yeah. Do not recommend. Uh, and that's all I played. I played Drive the Car Across the Country and Star Wars. (laughs) (laughs) 
but not at the same time. Uh, what about you, Zach? What have you been playing? <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, I can't spring onto you guys the fact that I was playing Monopoly on my phone uh, and I have it land with the same effect that it did last week. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, I've been playing that. Um, I saw some people playing on it, playing it online somewhere, and then I was just like, eh, "Why don't I give this a try on my phone?" And the phone makes it a lot easier slash quicker. Um, and I usually just play against AI. Uh, and then I also like it, it isn't. I don't play with any of the house rules, um, so it actually makes it a quicker game. The only the only difference th- the only different thing I do is. Uh, there is an option to give three random properties to everybody at the start of the game just to start, like, to just get the game going so you don't have to worry about you you fucking up and, ro- like, me rolling behind the uh, the AI, like, three turns in a row. And then be- being like, well, I have zero properties and they have three. Fuck my life, right? Um, yeah. And it's worked pretty well, except when... The AI, because I play with I play three player because four I'm just like oh that's gonna take too long, um, but I play three player. But occasionally the two AIs will each get one of the uh, the the deep blue ones, so uh, Boardwalk and Park Place, and then I just quit because I'm like at some point they're gonna do a stupid deal because they're real shitty at doing deals. You can be like, hey, I'll give you this, or you have this, you know, two hundred dollar thing that will let me get a monopoly i'll give you just this random train or this railroad and they'll be like hey they're equal value sounds good to me (laughs) (laughs) um yay yeah no i like i i i want to say the last game that i played uh i was able to trade them i was able to trade with uh one of them to get all three of the light blues and then immediately filled it up with hotels before they had finished uh, go- going through their first lap. So <laughs> right on their second round, they're like, all right, guys, just to let you know, you land here, it's $550. So yeah, it's all know, over. It's all. And it was, I was going great with me until uh, in order to do that trade, I, th- uh, I think I ended up giving, giving somebody um, boardwalk. But like, what, I was like, here's boardwalk, but give me a shitload of money. And them being stupid, it was like, yeah, 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 totally. Here you go, all that shit. But then eventually, they were able to uh, get enough money to where they had four houses on Boardwalk, and then I landed on a chance. And this is after uh, after the other AI landed on my shit and went broke and went bankrupt. All of my stuff. I was like, sweet. Now I just gotta wait for the, him to just land on my stuff, and then. I landed on chance, and it said, "All right, go to Boardwalk." And I was like, "Ah, well." That's like two thousand dollars, so I have lot. I have now lost. <laughs> <laughs> what if I don't want a chance. Yeah, exactly. Can I not chance. I mean, technically, I did find out that if I, after you roll, if you go somewhere bad, you can just exit out of the app, and then it when you boot it back up, it's like, oh. hey, it's your turn, and then you will just probably roll a different number. <laughs> But I, I try not to do that. I try not to do that because I'm like, then what's the point of the fucking game if I want to be like, I only want uh, the perfect rolls. Yeah, I only want the best rolls. Like no, I. But I was <laughs> I, I, It was nice enough just to be like, all right, well now the game has ended. Like that roll ended the game, and I'm okay with that. So yeah, <laughs> at least Monopoly ended. Exactly. Yeah. Um. No, that's basically all I've been playing board game wise. So just Monopoly, huh? Yeah, just Monopoly. Lame. Uh, <laughs> lame. Try not leave you at too least much about it. At least it is something. So true. And, hey, last week when we talked about it, you didn't have shit, Adrian. All right. So <laughs> no, no, I did not. Um. And look, our board. It went to th- you know thirty-one minutes for our board game talk last time. It went yeah? to s- s- fucking sixteen. So yeah, I, d- <laughs> I I don't even remember putting the box in my car that had all of my Small World. And uh, Flashpoint stuff in it. I discovered that as I was unloading the car today. And I was like, well, I guess I have all this shit in Denver for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. I would try Flashpoint at some point. But... And you know what? I think it's Flashpoint Expansions. I don't even think it has the fucking base game in the box. <laughs> what? Perfect. Perfect. That's, that's great. great. I don't even remember putting it in the car. 
I pulled it out of my car, <laughs> and I was like, why the fuck did I put this in the car? I no hope idea, I didn't yeah. forget, like, another box there that I meant to grab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways. Yep. So it's banter time now? I think it's banter time now. Nice. Um, I have so many cookies. My mom was going to mail me all the cookies, and now I just drove them back so she didn't have to mail them. So I'm well, eating, there you go. I'm just what kind of cookies? Uh, Christmas yeah. cookies? I don't know. Chocolate chip, peanut butter, like these sort of walnut powdered sugar crescent cookies. Some cr- cr- cookies shaped like Christmas trees that are like sugar cookies. Gotcha. I don't know. A fuckload of cookies. Fuckload of cookies. Yeah. Okay. Fucking fuckloads. Um, so World of Warcraft. Yes. Uh, is being played. Not right now, but... But soon after. <laughs> yes, sometimes during. <laughs> um, new expansion's pretty all right so far. I haven't gotten I've a lot of time it. with it. You, I think you have like... Tw- you probably have far more than 28 hours on me at this point. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was able to play a good amount, like, the week that it came out. But um, right now, it's been a lot of me doing Mythics with my friend. And then just doing, like, the da- you know the dailies and weekly things. And then it's like, ah, okay, I'm good. I'll go do something else. Yeah. Um, it's nice to not have uh, a drive to just continuously play. It's nice to just be like, and I've done the things I've wanted to do, and now I will stop. <laughs> yeah, and and a lot of that's like weekly <laughs> stuff that you can't, you know, gorge on. Exactly. Anyways. And like, even uh, the maw, it's it's there's like a literal <laughs> there's there's a an end to how much you can do in the maw because yeah. the the jailer will just fucking kill you if you do yeah. too much in the maw. Yeah, it has a it, it's called it's basically called Eye of the Jailer that as you do things in there, it will. Uh, progress and it'll go through five tiers and each tier makes it harder for you to be in the area and then on the fifth tier he literally is like all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna start by reducing the amount you could heal yourself and then i'm going to start doing damage to you and because you can't heal yourself you are going to die from this so you need to get the fuck out it's called like immediate eradication or something yeah yeah as the mall walker you know the, <laughs> you know there's no one has ever escaped the mall except for these millions of people that literally have. Um, <laughs> and, and then, I, you, I, I was, and then <laughs> like f- four or five friends. Yeah. And I, I remember I was, I was uh, joking with some, some guild members online. I was like, so Jane is like the mage, right? And mages have portals. Do portals work in the mall? Oh, a hundred percent they do. Then why doesn't Jaina fucking portal <laughs> to anywhere? <laughs> Cause she said her portals don't work, <laughs> uh, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, what about Thrall, this shaman? Don't they have an ability that's literally astral recall that they can say? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes, there's a lot of like hand waving in terms of like gameplay and stuff like that, but it's still like... Also, it's horrifying because all of your friends are being tortured in hell this entire time. Yep, yes. And it's just like, I, I kind of want to go and do this quest that lets me free those people because they show you visions and it's like, oh, she's being tortured with fire right now. <laughs> and it's like, like, Jesus. Oh, God, I want to help her. And you're like, okay, we'll come back next week and you can probably help her then. And you're like, uh, okay. Okay. All right. uh, <laughs> great. Yeah. They're being tortured uh, for so long. They don't know how long time has passed. Yeah, that's that's a good sign, right? That's yeah. <laughs> After great. I rescued Bane, he just has been sitting by the wall forever. <laughs> uh, just, uh, yep, hasn't uh, hasn't moved at all. No. <laughs> uh, uh, Torghast has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, that's the rogue, the, the, the roguelike. Yeah, um, and that is also one of the things where it's like technically, if I wanted to, I could. Run layer one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and five, and then six. Or you can just run layer six, and then just get all the rewards for the previous one, like the previous levels, which is good, because that'd be real shitty if they're like, just run it eight times, and you can get all your they're rewards. Not short. No, they're, they're not. They're like not. No, they're not. 30 they're like minutes? 30 to 45 minutes, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is good, at least, that they're like, hey, get as high as you can, and then get your rewards, and then if you, if you don't get all the way up, you can do them later. But... Uh, it's nice to have that available. It's going to be a real problem for me though, once you once the um, the endless opens because that's mm-hmm. going to give you uh, 
mounts and like transmog stuff. Yeah. Uh, cosmetic things. And I'm a real sucker for those. And it's just like, oh, just do a quick 18 floors. That'll be real quick, right? And I'm like, yeah, totally. It'll be fine. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you next week. Yep. <laughs> uh, but overall, it's been, I've been enjoying it so far. So uh, the cyberpunk came out. <laughs> oh, my God. With a big old thug. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a mess. It's, it, unsurprisingly, yeah. the game yeah. that they kept having the push, and then people were like, "Fucking release the game already!" And then they're like, and then everyone oh. that was previewing it or reviewing it and gave it like a poor score, everyone was like, "You are a fucking piece of shit monster! How dare you call the most perfect game of all time a buggy mess?" And then everyone got a hold of it and like, "Fuck, this is a buggy mess." That doesn't I seem like refund. gamer culture at all. Yeah, that. Yeah, the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. It, it ran like trash on my computer. I have a, a AMD like or, uh, like five eighty. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't pick up a thirty eighty. No, thought, because I they thought, sell. I thought within... you wanted to. I thought you wanted to. Oh, I sure did. <laughs> uh, it was my first choice, but I got a PS five and an Xbox Series X because um, I couldn't get a thirty eighty, and I still can't get a thirty eighty. I was looking at the Discord as it dropped onto New Newegg, and they all sold out within seconds. And they dropped the AMD uh, 5600X processors, and those sold out within seconds. These are both things that I would like. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's just it's selling out within seconds every time. I've completely given up on even trying to get one of those. Like yeah. I'm just, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Nope. J just pay like, you know, 150 percent. No. no. Double. <laughs> Stop. Just no. <laughs> there's plenty available on eBay. Yeah, there's there. It's there if you want it. You just apparently don't want it enough, Adrian. I, it's just a I failing do, on your character is all I'm saying. I I keep seeing like these things that people post about like fucking with those scammers. Like you know, it doesn't work as well with like the eBay ones because they just want to ship it to you. But like. Do it with guys like on Craigslist who are who are selling it. Like, yeah, dude, I'll totally meet you. Like, you know, we'll meet over here, blah, 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 blah. And then just never show up. <laughs> like, get yep. them to drive like an hour out of their way to sell an Xbox for three times the price. And then, nope, there's never anybody there. And they just wasted all their time. Look, you could you could you could get a 3080 right now for the low price of fifteen hundred and sixty nine dollars. Jesus. That's <laughs> yeah, more no. than double. That is more than what the base cost of a 3090 is, FYI. So. Yes. <laughs> Never mind that I could build a very, very capable computer for fifteen hundred dollars right now. Yeah. Like, and then the for the, and, yeah, but then for three thousand, you could also add a 3080 to. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, hardest of passes. To be fair, uh, uh, the some of the easiest way to get a 3080 is to buy one of those pre-built machines. Yes. That's like the only Ooh. way I can see them reliably like last more than a few seconds. But even those pre-built machines that are thousands of dollars are selling out instantaneously. But you can count it in like almost a minute instead of seconds. Yep. <laughs> oh, fucking bots are destroying the world. Speaking of bots. Because that's really all that is. Cyberpunk 2077 runs slightly better after this first patch. Uh, I can get it running at 1440p between 30 and 45 frames per second on medium settings now. <laughs> hey, there you Whoa. go. I, I had I'm... that thing at low, and it was <laughs> running at like 25. And I was like, what the fuck? I, I saw, um, I, I watched somebody play it online, uh, and it's like one of the computer like people, so they have like top-of-the-line equipment. Uh -huh. And they were, they had it on, on for 4K, and without DLSS, uh, with ray tracing on, it ran like absolute hot garbage. <laughs> yeah. Like with a top, like you had to have uh, DLSS enabled in order for it to actually run well with ray, ray tracing. So it's definitely like, it's, it's, what did you say? It was like the new crisis almost. Yeah. So, yeah. Can it run crisis? Exactly. <laughs> can it run cyberpunk? No, nothing no. can because it's a poorly optimized no. trashy game. You know what? Definitely can't. The PS4. And the Xbox no. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's a last-gen game. It was supposed to come out in April, right? Yeah. What would this nightmare would have been like if it was in April when it was oh, supposed God. to release? 
Um, but yeah, I'll play that uh, for more than 20 minutes sooner. Uh, there's a lot of games coming out right now. I I know when it was when it was just around the corner. I was like, I I either need to buy it now or just wait like six months down the road. And it definitely seems like I made the right decision just waiting. <laughs> yeah, that, that day it came... just gonna just gonna no man's sky it. So <laughs> that day it came out, I was like, wow, there's a lot of people playing this game on my friends list, and now it's like no one <laughs> no. playing this game. Um. Yeah, I have 82 minutes in the game, and most of that was trying to figure out my fucking video <laughs> settings. So, uh, <laughs> or, you know, I went through, and then I got to the intro, and then I had to restart the game, and it didn't save where I was, and I had to remake my character again, and start it all over again, because it didn't save my character. So I had to choose, you know, big dong or small dong um, again. Now... Wasn't there a problem with if you got like the big one, it like <laughs> glitched through your your pants, so I've you can just this. always see it? I've heard this, but I have not seen this. So okay, I do not have enough time in the game gotcha. to know if my dong pokes through my pants or not. <laughs> well, isn't it first person? Couldn't you just look down and then you, you, you find know, out? I haven't looked down. I haven't. I haven't <laughs> had an opportunity really. Um, <laughs> After you get past that first intro, I don't think I've even gotten to an area where you can control the character. I just got to the tutorial. That's that's where I am. Gotcha. Yeah. Jesus. This would normally take you five to ten minutes, but I've spent <laughs> 70 minutes trying to get it to look good and play at a decent frame rate. Look, I get it. The game's been, you know, teased for eight years, so you gotta you gotta spend as much time with it as you can just to make yeah, sure. Yeah, and I'm, like I am very much not on the hype train of the cyberpunk where a lot right? of people were. Yeah. I could have gotten the secret lab chair that was all Cyberpunk 2077. I didn't, because I'm not a crazy person. You could have gotten the WoW one, though, so, you know. Is the, I, didn't, I didn't know there was a WoW one. But... <laughs> 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 uh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too bad. You, you can always get another chair. <laughs> yeah, another, like, many hundreds of dollars chair. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'll tell you what. I, Look, I, what are you going to use that money on? A video card? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even if I wanted to, really, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll help offset the cost of your new WoW gaming chair by giving you twenty bucks for your current gaming chair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's a. It's not a bad. All, all right, all right, all right. Fifty. <laughs> no, Jeff, you're awfully quiet. Did, he's did thinking. You get he's thinking. Jeff? No, he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's thinking about right. it. contemplating. Okay. <laughs> Cash. Cash. <laughs> Cold hard cash. Yeah. It was the last time um, anyone actually used cash. Yeah. Have it be 5,000 pennies and then you just throw it at him, Major. <laughs> <laughs> just load it into like a little like disc flicker gun and just flick little pennies at him. Yep. That'll take a while. <laughs> <laughs> 5,000. <000. laughs> it's got to do this 4,999 more times. Yep. Trust me, it's worth The joke is worth it, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> oh shit. Um so I, I wanna make sure to reiterate it because it was last week. Uh I, I recently started watching Annie Donna's Big House of Fun. Yeah. Real good on Netflix. I've also watched their um their YouTube specials, uh new show and uh the album live tour uh multiple times and they are hilarious and they're great. Uh, and you should watch them if you get if if I would say watch one of their clips online, and if you can handle it, then watch some of their live shit, uh, <laughs> because they definitely uh, lean towards the absurdist side uh, for for a lot of stuff. But not um, not as bad as Tim no, and Eric's no, cringe no. level. No, like the uh, I had forgotten about it re- until I rewatched the new show uh, live tour again. Uh, the Master Chef intro. Do you remember that? Where they're no. like, they're, they're, uh, you know what Master Chef is, right? No. I yes, I do. Okay, it's a show. It's a cooking show, but it's like they're, um, like the music's playing, and they are like mixing, um, like mixing stuff or making things in the oven, and then they like turn towards the camera, and then do, you know, like when it's like like trying to introduce them. If that doesn't sound familiar. No. No, okay. Well, I guess you'll just have to rewatch that entire thing again. Uh, <laughs> but it's I I forgot about that one in rewatching it. It was fucking hilarious. So B 
But yeah, Auntie Donna is real good. A lot of music. Good. A lot of music. A lot more music. Like, I was surprised when I saw that album, like, like full show. Uh, I was not expecting it to be music the, almost the entire time. Um, cause I knew they had some musical elements in, in some of their skits. And then I was like, Oh no, they just straight up released an album. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, uh, they're pretty funny. Yep. They've been doing uh, a YouTube are on their YouTube channel, like promotional videos for the Netflix show. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those are very funny. They are very good. Yeah. Um, they get the Netflix end tattooed on their asses. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, they actually go to a tattoo shop and get the Netflix end on their asses. Yeah. They get they get a Domino's deal coupon mm-hmm. code. Oh, the Domino's with, one is great. Yeah. <laughs> with with Domino's in Australia. Um they also do like a a watch party for all the episodes so you can watch along as they live commentate over the episode. Yeah. I need a to bunch watch that. At least two actors from The Boys are in it. I know one. Who's the other one? So the one where they're in, it's black and white, and they're they're with the peach basket. Uh huh. Uh, it's uh Huey, the that guy. He's he's oh. in that. He's in that skit. Huh. I guess uh. he's who told Homelander guy about uh, them, gotcha. and then they asked him before they even saw the show. They didn't even uh. know who he was. And they were like, "Oh, the, our friend, the, the guy, this guy loves us. You should be on the show." And he was like, "Sure." Yeah. And it, his name's Anthony Starr. And yes. then I found out that he goes by Tony, and I'm like, "That what? That like just <laughs> for whatever reason blew my mind." I'm like, "That does not look like a Tony at all." Yeah. So, the Stray Man. Yes, the Stray Man's great. I love that one. <laughs> you could just find the skit on YouTube. It's yes, you good. can. Yeah, I would say watch that one. And if you are a fan of, the, if you like that one, then you can start yeah. looking at their other stuff. But if you're like, mm, no, I'm good, then you can just stay away from things. <laughs> yeah. Adrian seems to have enjoyed all of the random skits that we've uh, sent to him. <laughs> but the videos were great. Yes. Got him. I don't know. So, Did so like mate? when I watched the Netflix like trailer for the Anti Donna shit, I was like, eh, this looks like, I don't know. I, and I talked about it last week and uh, like that it like Eric and Andre and all that shit is just too off the wall weird for me. Like I can't get into it. I don't find any of it fucking funny. The The only thing I've ever found funny from uh, Tim, and, Tim and Eric. Yeah. Uh, or from. Yeah. Because Eric Andre is the one guy in Tim and Eric, right? No, 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 no. I'm it's, confused. Yes. Is Eric Andre a different person? Yes, yes. he is. Okay. <laughs> yes, and that's who I'm thinking of. And the only thing I've ever found funny from him is the meme of him Let shooting in. Hannibal Burris oh. in the oh, chair. Yeah. yeah. And like putting that on like, why did so and so do this? You know, like but I've never actually found any of his stuff funny. I've never found any of Tim and Eric funny. Like and granted I've never really given it a shot because I definitely assumed that the Eric and Tim and Eric was Eric Andre until gotcha. literally right no. now. No. So <laughs> No, it's, it's just all that same weird, very absurdist humor that I, mean, I don't quite get. Yeah, it's it's they're all from that that same like Adult Swim style of right cringe humor. And I got yeah, I got a similar vibe from the on- Auntie Donna Netflix trailer. The Ed Helms stuff in it like almost pulled me over because I was like, Who? I do really like Ed Helms. Who? Sorry, I'm confused. Ed Helms. I don't. Ed Helms. El- Ed Helms. Ed. I don't. No, that doesn't. That's not. You think his name is Ed? It's. Are you talking about Egg Holmes? Egg. Egg, egg. Holmes. His name egg. is Egg. It's Egg. No. Yeah. What? It's Egg. It's Egg. Hmm. <laughs> You're killing me here. That's part of See, this. It's it part maybe... of the sketch. I could have sworn on that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ed Helms yeah. is like, no, my name's not Ed. It's Egg. You guys think yeah. my name is Ed? And they're like, oh, yeah. See, and they're I like, look at your that. internet movie database page. Yeah. And then it just cuts to him on the phone with an agent. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I would just say, give, yeah, give this. Sh- like, it's. It, I feel like it really starts off with a bang, literally, because everything's a drum. Is the is the very first thing that opens it up. Like, give it a give it a try. And then if at any point you're like, this is stupid. Fuck it. I I get it. Uh, but I'm just saying, at least at least give it a shot. And it's also only six episodes too, so it's not like you're making a big time investment. Of like, it's six twenty minute episodes. So 
You get to see Jerry Seinfeld, so you know that was pretty cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, some of them are pretty short. They're like seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Twenty. The longest one's twenty three minutes. The shortest yeah, is seventeen think, minutes. Yeah, I think what twenty three is that the the last one with the Queen. <laughs> no, of the second one with oh, egg. Okay. Oh, okay. Egg Helms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you guys had me going. I was so fucking confused. I was like, "Is it? Am I crazy? I I could have sworn that I saw Ed Helms in the trailer for that. And like, is Egg Helms one of the names of the Anti Donna people? I just do not understand. No. What the fuck is happening? I hate you all so much. <laughs> take um, a cue from my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Uh. Um, <laughs> I don't have a lot for banter other than the fact that out of fucking nowhere um, uh, I'm trying to blank on his fucking name Drew Locke for the Denver Broncos uh, the Broncos romped the, pa- the Panthers this past Sunday I didn't watch the game at all I was working and I wasn't even paying attention and then I got done and I saw the fucking stat line Drew Locke has just set, like, had the third best single game quarterback performance of any quarterback in Broncos history. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, you know what was the most surprising for me was that the, the Broncos had a quarterback. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we finally got our quarterbacks back after we almost beat. Well, no, we didn't come anywhere near beating the Chiefs with no quarterback. That it was the week before where we lost with no quarterback. But then we almost beat the Chiefs last week with Drew Locke. Uh, and uh, and we didn't. But then we came back out of, out of nowhere, and he threw. He was like twenty four of twenty seven passes, a couple hundred yards, four touchdowns, like a one hundred forty five passer rating. It's like what the fuck? Where was this all season? Jesus. Um. Well, so we'll see if that's sustainable. You know, no, maybe maybe the that Bills was the are going to crush the Broncos. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the ten and three Bills. They're going to overlook us, just like the Chiefs <laughs> almost did. They're just going to drive on by. Yeah. Classic trap game. Classic <laughs> trap game. <laughs> it was all a trap. No, the Bills almost certainly will absolutely savage the Broncos before they go all the way to lose to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. <laughs> like, that's their destiny. Um, but, uh, yeah. That's about all I have. It snowed. No, but not a whole lot of snow. Uh, Megan and I booked uh, a avalanche training course uh, in first week in July, so that's exciting. We're looking forward to that. Uh, oh, I found out today, literally day of recording, uh, Wednesday, when this would have normally released in the before times, uh, Megan's going to get the first uh, dose of the old COVID vaccine, so... She's one of the lucky 750, 950, 900, 900 people at her hospital who are getting it. They have 3,000 people who need it at her hospital, but only 900 of them are getting it, and she's one of them. Nice. So, yay. Uh, Several of the nurses aren't getting it because they've already had COVID and are, in theory, already protected. (laughs) Hmm. Um, I was kind of surprised they weren't going to have them do, like, antibody tests. To be like, oh, no, you've got antibodies. You don't need the vaccine. They're in limited supply. But they're also unreliable. So, yeah, they're reliable enough. I could see that being a rough basis, <clears throat> at least at the beginning when the vaccine is super hard to come by. Yeah. Like I was listening to NPR this morning in Michigan, thought they were getting like a half a million, and instead they're getting like 80,000. 90, yeah. yeah like, like next to nothing. Yeah. Relatively. So, yeah. Um, that's all I had for banter. It snowed. The Broncos won. Megan's getting a vaccine. And I'm glad I didn't buy Cyberpunk 2077. Yes. Because <laughs> I almost did. Yes. You lucked out. Good job. Now I will wait uh, like a year and see where it's at. Yep. Like I said, you're in No be... Man's Sky yet. Exactly. And and that's exactly what it is. I love No Man's Sky now. Uh, it's, a, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. And... So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And CD Projekt Red has a history of fixing games. Like the original Witcher was a goddamn mess too. And they put a lot of work into it and it came out really good. They put a ton of work into Witcher 3 over the years. Now granted, it was functional on release. 
uh, but they still put a ton of like work and a lot of it was like free expansions and stuff. So we will see where things are in like a year and yeah. hopefully it'll work out. Apparently it's already made back all of its money. It, yeah. So marketing included. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. Yes. Well, we'll oh. check back in like a month or two. Cause didn't they open it up where they're going to refund every like, I mean, they're offering PS4, refunds. Yeah. Xbox. They're not automatically refunding people. They're not idiots. <laughs> I mean, I guess we'll see how many people actually apply for the refund and what they yeah. do, you know. I mean, to be fair, I'm glad that some people are playing it because I spent a good chunk of today laughing my ass off at videos about the glitches. So I'm glad there's people out there doing shit and recording it and putting it on the internet for me to laugh at. Sadly, they patched out the trees. No, oh, that's a bummer. Oh, the little like random trees that spawned everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it was a it was like a video card driver issue more than a bug. But oh uh, yeah, 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 that was a good one. <laughs> I woke up and my apartment was covered in trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good shit. Mm-hmm. I do have one last thing, and that's just Go that uh, Super Hot VR had uh, had a Boxing Day update apparently, uh, but it's hmm. just a it's just all it. The main thing that it added was a new endless level that's like Christmas themed and it has like Christmas music that ramps up as you do more and more kills. Uh, But I just forgot how fun that game is, especially like I've been trying to do all the endless levels now. And that's usually like kill 100 people without dying. Mm. Uh, And it gets pretty fucking crazy. Like, as you get further along, where, like, three or four guys are, like, showing up all with shotguns coming at you from, like, four different directions. And you have to time a lot of shit really quickly. But there's been a lot of times when I've been focused uh, on one side for just just long enough to be like, hmm, maybe I should look at the other side. And then right as I go to turn, there's a bullet in my face. And then I'm like, ah, well, that was that was my bad. And we're just going to go ahead and restart <laughs> because I am now dead. <laughs> But it's been a lot of fun, uh, especially like they give you like they give you a lot of like melee weapons, which are, which are completely useless and endless in terms of like actually trying to get farther along the game. But I always like taking those and like throwing them at people. And then especially if I can like slice their bullets as I'm as I hit them, it feels real nice. So that's if all I ever get a VR. I'll play super hot. I oh, think. it is. You're going to be it is definitely one of the best games for VR and and, like the jump from 2d to 3d in terms of like playing it on your computer versus VR is just, it's, it's a whole nother, it's a step up that like, I couldn't go back to playing the original game. So, although I'm, I could also see losing my mind if I had to in VR, just constantly here. Super hot. Yeah. Super hot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. God, that drove me nuts. But right on. Uh, if that's your last bit of banter, then, Zach, I think we are ready to move on. Um, no bloody minute? No. Uh, we're trying uh, to see who's interested in the next season. Um, we'll see what happens with the new rule set that is out. Uh, but our online implementations still use the old version, so that's what will probably continue to happen. There you go. Um no Kingdom Death, although that might change uh, here in the nearish future. So uh, I think all of that moves us over to some news and Kickstarters. First and only up on news, Terraforming Mars, uh, the app, is getting a Prelude expansion for what some people are calling far too much money of $7. Yeah, so, I, so I don't remember. I feel like we may have mentioned it, but we may not have. Uh, that the Prelude was finally coming to the Steam version of Terraforming Mars slash the like official app. Uh, uh, Adrian, you've played it, right? I I know I've played the original. Or, like I played the main app. You've played it too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I own it on Steam. Megan owns it on Steam. We've played it together. We both like it. I have never uh, purchased just one it on those, Steam. Yeah, it's just one of those things where like the. After playing all of the expansions in real life, going and playing vanilla. Uh, even online is rough. Uh, I do really like like the graphics and everything are great. Like when you place water, it looks like actual water, not just a hex tile. Like it fills in and looks like a lake. Uh, and there's like you know when you do greenery, like trees sprout and it looks the the 
graphics and art of it are awesome. Yes. But vanilla Terraforming Mars, although still great, when you're used to the expansions, can feel a little lackluster. Especially not having Prelude. Like, for me, that was always... Even if even if it was just like, well, we can just do vanilla along with Prelude. Yeah. Prelude was easily like when it came out and we started playing with it, it was one of those where it was immediately like, this is a mandatory expansion. Like it just it makes the game so much better. Especially playing with uh the different like actual corpse. Like if you're playing with beginner corpse, everybody's starting on the same foot anyway, nothing fucking matters. Uh, and that's a boring way to play. But this just adds that little bit more asymmetry, that little bit more of a custom start uh, right out of the gate. It's great. So uh, super excited to see this. I have not bought it yet, however, because I don't really play Terraforming Mars on Steam. If I'm going to play Terraforming Mars, I typically play the Make Mars Green Again tabletop simulator mod because it has all of the expansions and a bunch of fan content and is really well implemented with really awesome... The scripting isn't that much different than the actual app itself so yeah yeah at that point it pretty much all runs like it was a made for it app uh and then as we jeff kind of alluded to like the prelude is 6.99 uh you know so at this point the base game was like 21 Five. like 20 to 25 ish yeah this is now seven you know so you're starting to pay almost the cost of a full board game again uh, to get Terraforming Mars and the one expansion. Uh, it's tw- um, $20. 20 Okay. Yes. So this is a, roughly a third of the, the cost. Um, and it doesn't add that much. I mean, there's it's some corporations and some project cards. Yeah, and it, it's interesting cards. because of how much better it makes the game, it doesn't feel like it adds that much. It re- Like, really, Prelude feels like something that should have just been in the game all along, even the base game. Um, you know, I don't know if it's something they had thought of and then they pulled aside, or if it is something they legitimately came up with after the fact, but it feels like it should have been there all along. And I don't remember um, if the Terraforming Mars digital implementation changed developer hands at some point. Uh, I believe yes, the original, the original one, developer yeah. did go out of business. Okay. And now it's under the Asmodee Digital. Correct. S- Correct. Big thing. Yeah. Um, so the Reddit thread that kind of where somebody was complaining about this that brought up this whole discussion, like people go back and forth all across it uh, about how, yeah, it, like some people are like, yeah, that is a bit much. And other people are like, well, no, because there's a shit ton of things that go into that kind of development and like realistically when you're talking about games like uh, and especially looking at steam like terraforming mars itself does not have uh much in the way of uh a player base for terraforming mars like it's really hasn't gotten many reviews it doesn't seem to be on that much the base game and then expansions are picked up by even fewer of the base game owners and so at some point, like, in order to recoup any cost of, of it and justify further development, you got to pick a price point. Um, so it's kind of all over the place. I don't know. I, I struggle with the whole thing. Like, I did buy, like I said, I own Terraform Mars on Steam for 20 some dollars there. Um, but I never fucking play it. Like, I, there's Tabletop Simulator with an amazing, continuously supported fan mod uh of the game and it's great and if i was going to play terraforming mars digitally i'd almost just rather do that especially because it works really well for like only one person needs to have it to play it with friends um it's easy to do like drop in drop out spectating like you have a lot more control of moving around and like looking at different things because of the way tabletop simulator lets you really zoom in and move things around and do whatever and organize the way you want to it just seems better. I mean, uh, I think I think the only thing it has going for it is AI. Yeah. So whether it's just yeah you know, pl- playing against AI players or I think the uh, the single the player, solo challenge. Yeah. yeah. So so I it's hard because I, mean, I don't I don't feel like six ninety nine. Like my gut reaction is that it's high, but I can understand why it might be that price. But that also is a price that I'm not interested in paying. Yeah, I could have um, seen. Like five dollars for this, and then then like ten dollars for the bigger expansions or something like that. Yeah, 
but this should, if mean, it goes it, on sale for under five, I'll probably buy it. Yeah, but I don't know. Just don't know. So, <laughs> so yeah. So if you only have Terraforming Mars on Steam, or you're super dedicated to playing the official versions of it, seven ninety or six ninety nine, seven bucks will get you Prelude. Uh, otherwise, you can play it on Tabletop Simulator and Bodaju and a bunch of other places uh, online. So go for it. Uh, and that's it for news. Just the one little bit of brief news slash discussion. And now Kickstarters. Just the one, really. Yeah. Indeed. First up on Kickstarter? Only, up, only on up on Kickstarter. Kickstarter? Last up on Kickstarter. <laughs> 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 it's the last Kickstarter. Uh, vindication and expansions. Uh, a very well funded, uh, three hundred eighty three thousand of its sixty two thousand dollar goal. Just under fifty one hundred backers, uh, and just under two weeks left to pledge this one, which you can pledge for just the expansion for twenty nine dollars, or you can get the ultimate bundle for two hundred and twenty nine dollars. A lot of money. That's a lot at, of at, fucking money, especially at, considering how few miniatures are in this game. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> At the very least, that's not the most popular. Um, no, pledge. just just the twenty nine dollars is the most popular. But yeah. if you don't have the game, you know two hundred twenty nine dollars. Just do it. Do right. it. <laughs> I mean, you could also just get the base game for ninety, and then add technically what two thirty dollar ones. So make it like one hundred and sixty to get the base game and it, the two expansions. Yeah. So it, yeah. This one, all the ultimate bundle includes everything they've ever done for, related to this game. So, yes. yeah. So, Adrian, I know you've just read all about. You were an expert. Oh my god! You're such an expert on this game. Why don't you just go ahead and give a quick 20 minute rundown on how it how it plays? <laughs> yeah. So, Vindication is a modern Euro game experience. It's an experience, guys. Uh, two to five players, 15 to 30 minutes per player, uh, and essentially, uh. They give it the lofty game descriptors, which is actually what they call it. Lofty game descriptors, high strategy, tableau building, resource management, area control, action selection, modular board, and variable player powers. Uh, so it is a co uh, competitive game, semi-cooperative game, largely competitive, where you are trying to overcome your previous life of awfulness, uh, gain honor, uh over the course of the game, and then whoever has the most honor at the end of the game is going to be the victor. Uh, you do a bunch of different shit all throughout the game, uh, moving around, getting companions, relics, fighting monsters, traits, getting uh, pets, advanced exploring, resource management, all kinds of stuff. Like area that. control tactics. Yeah. I need form action selection. I need they, more buzzwords, guys. They just really, really just <laughs> spam the buzzwords hard. Uh, essentially the way the game works is you have starting players based on like whoever you, whatever you pick, you have starting places on this little hex board. Uh, although it's a weird hex board where the hexes don't actually line up perfectly. They've got gaps for little triangles because the hexes are terrain, but you move in the triangles. I don't know. Movement in the rule book was explained. Fuck awful. Um, so you start off on one of the triangles and you reveal some of the tiles that are near you and then there's more exploring as you uncover other tiles and you can find monsters and things to fight and quests to go on. Uh, and through all of that, you somehow gain honor. And I I was struggling to... like I actually pulled up the rule book to try and figure out how to play this game you and I have three no idea. on each turn. Yes. You do three actions, move, like do an action and activate a player power a companion a companion yeah um and you just rinse wash and repeat and there's a handful of actions you can do at any time uh those three actions that are your main actions you do each of them once but you can do them in whatever order you want um that lets you interact with the world around you to do all these other things uh and somehow all of that stuff involves all of those euro game buzzwords um yeah, man, I don't know. I struggle so hard to find any reason to even give a shit about this game. <laughs> um, like, they, like, Rado compares it to Gloomhaven, but, like, looking at it, it doesn't look like it has anywhere near the, I don't know, depth, in like, interest that Gloomhaven has. I don't know. I, I really don't get it. 
Um, the expansions uh, Chronicle adds deeper narrative journeys, so you'll get cards that happen kind of all throughout your turn that a tavern um, looking for information. And as you enter, uh, you see um, some people like fighting uh, and or I'm combining two of them. Sorry. Uh, so you go to a store and as you enter, you happen to catch two people like holding a knife to the throat of the proprietor. And so you can either bluff and like, well, so you can option one, mention you pass the town watch on your way in and that they're seconds away. Or option two, offer to buy the knife in exchange for the right to deal with a proprietor in your own way. And whichever one you choose, you get a card that references the different choice you made. As far as I can tell, though, the cards are exactly the same, aside from a slight different color token in the flavor text box. But I see no information about that token ever coming back into play anywhere, so I don't, I don't fully, I just still do not understand what the ultimate end goal of this stuff is. And it looks like you can see what like reward and what the outcome will be. And the, the outcome's not meaningful, it's just flavor text and a different symbol. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem good uh, for having, you know, narrative choice and different consequences. I don't, I don't buy it. Your choices don't seem to actually matter. Um, then they've got a, I mean, God damn, pledges include uh, the community designed promo pack that's being built over the course of the Kickstarter. So if you get involved, you can help build that promo pack. You can get the old expansion uh, leaders and alliances, which this Kickstarter doesn't really mention anything about what that actually does. Uh, other than the fact that you can't get it unless you get it here. Use your attributes to gain rapport with the leaders of Vindication, six mysterious guilds. Leverage that rapport to access powerful new abilities. It's got some game trays that look like nice and useful, like a lot of game tray stuff is. But man, I don't know what it is about this I don't know if it's the Kickstarter or the game or both, but it just, it puts me, it gives me a giant meh, meh. I can't bring myself to care or be interested or look deep into to any aspect of it. And they don't make it easy. I really hate when Kickstarters don't tell you how the game plays without you clicking and reading through the fucking rule book. That is a huge pet peeve of mine. If you ever design a Kickstarter, fucking tell me how it plays in the Kickstarter. Think of all the cool shit. Nah. They have room for now, <laughs> but telling you how to play would have taken up room. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to see the, like, eight minis that all, again, seem completely goddamn useless. <laughs> like, they just, it's one of those games where, like, the minis aren't actually part of gameplay. They just exist. Why? Who gives a shit? Money. I guess. <laughs> That's it uh, for Kickstarters. Vindication, the board game. Go check it out if you want to. If my glowing coverage of it, you know, inspired you to go look at it. <laughs> it's fairly well uh, rated on BGG. So yeah. 2 251 overall. Uh, my Kickstarter is telling me that Mike is a backer. That might be Mike Jones. I don't know. We may never know. Mike Jones, I don't know if you even listen to the show anymore, but if you do and you're backing Vindication, send us an email and explain why. Convince us. Otherwise, that's it for Kickstarters. So we can... Peace out of that section of the show, which lets us move over to listener feedback, uh, which we actually have a little bit of listener feedback. Uh, so on episode 211, Jailhouse Deviled Eggs, Paulo from Paulo's Corner fame chimes in, says, hey, guys, just to drop you a Merry Christmas if I don't comment in time before that in another video. So, you're welcome, Paulo. Uh, I don't know. Well, I said you're welcome. Thank you, Paulo, for... <laughs> Merry Christmas. God, I don't know you're where welcome. that came from. I really don't know where that came from. Uh, thank you, Paulo, for the Merry Christmas. Uh, hope you also have an awesome uh, Christmas out there in Portugal. I don't know how much the Portuguese celebrate Christmas, but uh, hopefully it's an awesome time. Uh, for you and for all, all of our listeners. Enjoy the holiday season with all of its plethora of holidays crammed into it. Um, I, for one, have managed to not have to hear hardly any Christmas music uh, all the way through 
December 14th. And that makes me very happy because right. I hate Christmas music. <laughs> Good God, do I hate Christmas music. It's the worst. I worked in a mall for a lot of years and I, I really would have shot myself. Yeah. Christmas music. There's no way I wouldn't have killed myself if I worked in a mall or other retail environment uh, during Christmas. But yeah, that's it for listener feedback. Uh, if you would like to get a hold of us, there are a bunch of different ways to do so. You could send us an email. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. You could uh, follow us over on Twitter uh, or tweet at us on Twitter. I, uh, I, You're right there? Wow, my brain broke. No, I tried to change it up a little bit. You can follow us over on Twitter where I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I'm Jeff underscore MHGG. We have our Instagram account at MHGameGuys, uh, Facebook.com slash MHGameGuys, our website, MileHighGameGuys.com, uh, as well as all of our episode posts over on PunchboardMedia.com uh, have links to things like show notes for the news and Kickstarter items we talk about, uh, links to our Slack channel where you can join and bullshit with all of us and... Uh, you know, you're running out of time. Uh, the rumor has it that the Nickelback jokes are going to expire at the end of 2020, and people are going to find a new way to make fun of me. So if you want to make fun of me for liking Nickelback, uh, you got, like, two weeks left. So jump in the Slack channel and get your licks in uh, before 2020 ends. Um, yeah, after that, it'll just be like, we'll just hold up, like, photographs and be like, look at this photograph of Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Nickelback joke. That's... I think that falls under the broad <laughs> category of Nickelback jokes. I feel this is a one-person scheme that you're trying to pull. Uh, no, because it, it, it was like it was like three people. Like, because I was surprised to see it. Paul even agreed. Paul agreed that it was maybe time to retire the Nickelback joke because it had gotten old, largely because Boyd is almost the only one who still makes the joke. Well, maybe Boyd is killing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anybody if anybody knows things about being old. Boyd would. So. <laughs> um, you can follow us over on Twitch. Our Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash mhgameguys. Uh, we haven't streamed anything over there in a while, but every other Tuesday, Mile High Dungeon Delvers are still doing live playthroughs uh, or live D&D streams uh, with Leander DMing us. Uh, we are entering into part three, book three. I can't remember how he breaks it up. Uh, what the denomination is but we're moving into the third chapter maybe uh of the zarius champions campaign so uh exciting stuff last episode was a doozy had a lot of fun with it um yeah that's all the different ways to get in touch with us uh or follow us or interact with us um you know which we highly encourage and we super appreciate all of our fans and listeners and detractors you know like that's basically like 80 percent of the slack channel is just like why? Why does anybody even listen to these guys? They don't even talk about board games anymore. People who you thought were friends, but then expl- explicitly <laughs> denied you invitation to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was invited as long as I also get a COVID vaccine. Making getting one alone is not enough. I can't imagine. I can only imagine that there is a coming like caveat. Where he wouldn't let me know until I was like landing and he was supposed to pick me up from the airport. He's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, if you're not wearing a V-neck, I'm not going to let you hang out with me. And then I'll have just flown I... to San Francisco for no reason. No, knowing him, he'll have it ready for you. So, Oh my God, it'll be an even deeper V <laughs> yeah. than the one he sent us. Oh yeah. Uh, on that note, let's wrap this episode up. Uh, thanks as always to our sponsors, Gray Fox Games. Uh, their most recent Kickstarter uh campaign trail with the green party expansion is still available for pre-order if you missed out on that that'll be coming out next year uh campaign trail very highly rated uh game over on bgg uh of kind of an area control game of trying to win a election in the united states and the green party expansion adds even more political parties and more uh things that you can do to try and you know manipulate the people to win yourself an election so uh go check that out jeff do you have a prepared statement for us gray fox games quality games cleverly crafted also when you're fighting in the dark you don't need to use you need to use your sense of hearing and smell 
Don't trust your eyes. Use your ears. Feel the flow of the air with your whole body. Sure. That's the way to tell where your enemy is. Yeah. Uh, on that note, now that you know where your enemy is, we're going to leave. As always, I've been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm 14-hour Jeff. Bye. 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 Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.